thanking him for the fact that he has saved me, filled me with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost that was fire. And I just, I have no other mind but to run on to see what the end is going to be. And I'm excited. I'm excited for the fact that, one, we get to have Women's Day. Two, God allows us to have a say in the church. And I thank God for what he's doing. So I'm asking you to pray with me and to pray that I continue to be one of the children that he is calling for in these last and evil days to hang in there, don't throw in the towel. And I know that sometimes it gets a little rough, the trials come a little tight, but you know what? It is going to be payday after a while, and it's going to be a blessing. So on today, we're going to go, go into our message. Uh, I'm excited for the message because as the Lord had gave this to me, um, I was just excited for the fact that, you know, I was thinking about it, about how we always call everybody our friend. We're so quick, so quick. And I watch my kids do it, like in an instant, with people that they just meet. And sometimes even when they meet them, it's like, do you really know them to be your friend? I mean, it takes a while before you call someone your friend. And I had a, a friend, she passed on, I miss her dearly, but um, she had said to me, she says, Sister Jones, I've noticed, you don't call everybody your friend. And I said, no, I don't. Because when you have had people in your life that just pass through and, 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 and then some who may like, they're your friend, and then you find out that no, they really weren't your friend. But you got to know somebody gut-wise. I mean, literally. And the reason why I'm saying so, I'm bringing about why, bringing about what a friend. My message says the joy of a friend. Now, when we come to find out, you know, when you call someone your friend, it means you trust them. You trust in them. There is some... There's some loyalty there. Um, you wind up, you come, um, you, you, you have the same camaraderie, you have um, empathy. When they hurt, you hurt. When they're happy, you're happy. You're one with each other. And when I say you're one with each other, I mean you're one. I don't mean like husband and wife one, but you guys kind of know how each other is. And you feel what they feel because of the love you have for them and they for you. And so, you know, you become like, you know, I remember when people would, and I, and, and I don't know if she's ever watching or ever looked, but my best friend, and to me, I still feel like she's my best friend, although we don't talk as much or at all, but Karen, she would, she would know what I'm thinking, she would know how I feel, and vice versa. I would know how she did, we, we, we almost to the point where we would sound alike, we would laugh alike. Um, then as time grew on, you know how it go, you know, you move, they move, and, and all of this, and so you wind up feeling like, wow. You know, I wonder how they doing, especially if you lost touch. And so you tend to, you know, feel for them and everything, but yet at the same time, you keep praying. And I'm just praying and um, that God will interact us back together, however way he works it. But all I'm saying is that a friend, the joy of a friend, sometimes you miss all that. And when you miss it, you tend to pray for that person or you pray for yourself that, you know, things are, you know, be right again or be where you can, you know, do like what David and, and Jonathan did, you know, bless one another to the point where, you know, it's like if I go down, I'm there for you. I'm, I'm not going to let you, I'm, I'm not going to let you go down by yourself. But let me get into the scripture because the scripture is going to bring this out so plainly that you all will understand 
to what I'm saying. And I know that you kind of understand what I'm saying even right now because some of you are going through some situations with your friend. And, and when I do call people my friend, true enough, you better know that you really are my friend. And I, and I am yours. But God is more of a friend. Jesus is going to be more of a friend to you than anybody. So let's go to the scripture. We're going to go to St. John chapter 15. And we're going to start at the 13th verse. And we're going to end it at the 15th verse. And then we're going to go on to a couple of more other scriptures. The scripture reads, and this here is Jesus talking. Jesus says, greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Now you notice that he has it where it has an S. Now Jesus had 12 disciples. And he handpicked each one. But gather this. Even in him handpicking them. Being that they were his friends. He knew them way afar off. Before he chose them. That's how good God is. God knows who we're going to choose as friends, what's going to come on, what's going to go by, uh, what be said, how it's done, the whole nine yards. We don't know that. All we know is that we just interact with them. And, and, and sometimes we're surprised by some of the things that happen. But at the same time, we still are motivated and, and, and effective with our friend because, you know, they have become are link in a sense they they linked up with us and and you know how you know in the today's terms a lot of the young people use my ride or die and all this stuff that's pretty much how that is and 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 we tend to look at our friends as them when we call them our friend that means that they're gonna go down with me i'm gonna go down with them so whatever happens that's my that's my that's my boom. That's my friend. That we we did you don't mess with her, I don't mess with and, and definitely you don't mess with me. So it's like we're there for one another. You can call me at the drop of a hat, I'm there. If I call you, you're there. And this is how it was for Jesus. He was there, and he's still yet being there. And so Verse 14 says, Ye are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, 15, henceforth, I call you not servants. I didn't call you slaves. For the servant nor not what his Lord doeth. So if you was a slave or if you being a servant, you know, you don't know what, you know, the person that is over you going to say. It's like you don't know what your boss going to say. You don't know. And if you're that close to your boss, I think you're a little too close. There's a lot of fraternizing going on. But if they're your friend, then you kind of have some little bit of leeway. But you still should recognize the position. Okay? And then it says, but I have called you friends for all things that friends uh, for all things I have heard of my father, I made known unto you. So everything that my daddy talked about and told me about, like when he mentioned to me and told me that, you know, the kingdom of heaven, uh, I told you about it. I told you that I'm preparing a mansion for you. I'm preparing something great and in detail for you because I know how much you love it. I know how much you want to be there where I am. And that's how Jesus is with us. He wants us to be there with him. He is preparing, making sure everything is laid out good, making sure that we are, you know, set just right. It's like I just bought a new bed. And by me buying the bed, I had to go back and check this bed out like two, three times. And, and, you know, I did that on my own time. I didn't bring nobody with me. I, I wanted to price it by myself. But if I had my friend there, she'd be able to probably tell me, Cat, no, don't don't get that one because, you know, that ain't going to last that long. I, I know how my friend was thinking. But I didn't have that. So I had to do it by myself. But yet I had, I had to ask God. And Jesus, 
he's my camaraderie and, and he's there with me. And so he, you know, let me know that, yeah, that's a good deal. You're getting the right thing. Um, you're getting the insurance on it that you need. Um, if something should go down, break down, at least you are covered. And that's what I look at Jesus as being. He covers us. When he saves us, sanctifies us, I mean, like, clean us out. Because when I had got some roses, I cleaned the base out real good. It felt a little rough around the top part of it. But you know what? I turned the, the flip side of that towel over when washing it real good to get, it has like a little scrubber. And it scrubbed all of that little excess of whatever was rough on that, that vase. So, when I set it up, wiped it down, dried it off, put the roses in there, whoo, it was gleaming. It was looking beautiful. And so, now, you know, you look, you do the thing, same things for your friend. You look out for them. You make sure that you're praying for them. That, you know, hey, is everything, you check on them. Is everything all right? You call them and check on them from time to time. Hey, now that we got, you know, this Facebook and we got, you know, texting and all that stuff, I don't have to call you. I can call you by, I can text you. I'm thinking about you, let you know I'm thinking about you. And I, so what I do is I go ahead and, and I text you. And if you don't text back, then I know, well, she got it. I can go ahead and delete it. But I know that she got it. It's still going to stay in her, her phone or you know, how the way it works out. But she going to glance at it or something. Mm, somebody's thinking about me. Yeah. So, praise God. We we look at what God has done with Jesus and, and God has done for us. But Jesus was talking about his father. And talking about how good his father was letting him know what everything that he had prepared for him. And then he said, you know what? Since you telling me this, let me tell my friends about this because I want them to be ready and prepared for when they leave here, they know where they're going. They're going to be with me. They're going to see me. They're going to recognize me when they get there. And then on top of that, we're going to be praising you, Father, through everything that we have gone through. And, and that's what we are doing even today. That's why it's so imperative for everybody to decide to make Jesus their choice. We're going to go over to Proverbs. Proverbs speaks about it so well. And, and this is something that we need to get also in our spirit. Go to Proverbs. And we're going to go to the chapter 7. Go to 17th chapter. And the 17th chapter of Proverbs. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, 17th chapter of Proverbs. And we're going to go to the 17th verse. Now, I'm going to read to you the 17th verse out of the King James. And then I'm going to tell you what the Message Bible breaks it down and saying. 17th verse says, A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversary. Okay? Sometimes we think, wait, what? So, breaking it down by the Message Bible says that friends love through all kinds of weather. And it's not talking about, you know, whether you do this, whether you do that. No, no, no. It's talking about we love through all kinds of weather. Talking about sometime, fall time. Springtime, uh, winter time, all kinds of weather. So when we love through that, I don't care what kind of situation is going on, and you need me, I'm coming. And so that is the type of friend that Jesus was talking about. God was sharing with the with with, with Solomon about writing. About here it is. This is the kind of friends that you need. And so he said, friends love, this is message Bible, so don't get it twisted. Friends love through all kinds of weather. And families stick together in all kinds of trouble. You tell me, even though your family member do you wrong, let them be in some kind of mix-up. 
the first person they decide to call will be you. Because they know that you serve a God that gets things done. They're going to call you to pray. They're going to call you because, you know, uh, uh, I know I did you wrong kind of thing. But you know what, uh, brother, I need you to be able to pray for me. Because situation this, this, this doesn't happen. And I need God to, to change some things. You don't have to go into uh, investigative mode. You, all you need to do, because of the prayer request, okay, I'll pray for you. I'll pray. I'll ask God to do what he needs to do. But, but you need to know first, I'm going to be praying that you get saved. And that's something that we need to always interject. When we know that they're not living a life, but they live in a lie, that the enemy has sold them the bill of goods. I love it when this one preacher brought it about. Sin. Sucker investment in nothing. Again, sin. You don't need to know what kind of sin it is. All you need to know is that it's a sucker's investment in nothing. Okay? So, just go ahead. Accept what they're telling you. They, it ain't like they saying I'm sorry and all this kind of thing. All you need to do is, okay, I'm going to pray. Put that prayer request in. See don't God move. Now if God don't move, it's because you ain't living a nickel's worth of nothing. Okay? Because he said that he'll be there when we call. He said, I'm right there when you call. So, sometimes we always say, well... What happened? You know, are you fasting? Are you praying? Are you living the life according to what God has called you? Are you really living what God has called you to do, which is the church of God in Christ for you to show forth what Christ will do? Or are you holding some little secret of, now I ain't talking to her because she ain't da 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 da. Uh, I ain't talking to him because he did such and such a that ain't your call the Bible tells us to let every man examine himself so examine yourself make sure that you know that you're living a holy and confident life you got to be confident in what you do but if you ain't confident in what you're doing or you know what don't you take that uh, communion today <laughs> because mm -mm, you're not up to par. We have to realize that we got to examine ourselves. Don't take it and, and uh, I'm just going to say face. I'm going yeah, to, didn't do it. No, no, don't say face. Don't go to hell. Go to hell on, on account of a lie. No. Because, see, you already know Jesus said. A liar is not going to tarry in his sight. And then on top of that, that cuts him from doing anything for you because you've been lying. You can't lie in the face of God. The Lord said, no, I'm clear. Mama, I ain't been drinking. I don't drink. I, I'm clear at what I, I've told y'all. When I judge you, I'm going to judge you with a clear mind. Hello? When, when I mock you, I'm going to mock you with a clear mind. Because when you say, Lord, help me, help me. He's going to be saying, Lord, help me, help me. Y'all think I'm playing. But that's what the word say. He don't change or deviate from what his word say. So, all y'all that be writing on these little posters, R-I-H, R-I-P. You better know that they live a holy life before you put that down. Because if they didn't do it, 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 it it's no more the, uh, the rapture of, of them doing it at the last minute. Lord, save me. Like the thief at the cross. No, no. That was that one time for that thief. Ain't no more that. You, we got to show forth the presence of what God is doing. We have to lift this thing. Well, I'm going to do all the sin and death. Because see, this is the mindset that I had when I was younger. I'm going to do all the mess and junk I want to do. And then when I get ready to die, boom, I'm going to ask God to go ahead and forgive me. Mm. 
the devil was selling me a real spanking bag of goods. And it wasn't even good. It was all bad. It was constantly telling me, you got time. You got you ain't gotta do all that. Man, that's, that's doing too much. Really? Me clapping my hands. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That that that's bad. I'm trying to receive the Holy Ghost. We ain't even doing that no more. And y'all know I'm not telling no lies. We don't come to the altar and tarry. We don't wait. Girl, I, uh, how much time? You know, we would be right there trying to help pray them through. I remember one of my friends when we were uh, all seeking for the Holy Ghost. And I hope he don't mind me calling him, but Brother Lonnie. We'd be up there, Brother Lonnie, he wind up getting the Holy Ghost until, man, after church was over. And they were still, the mothers were still up there praising and, 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 and working with him, the deacons and all. And, and I'm like, man, I, I want to stay. I want to stay. But the Holy Ghost came, filled that brother with the Holy Ghost, and boy, when we came back to church that night, my God. Did the Lord pour out his spirit? Man, the whole church began to go up again. And 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 he he just had to keep he kept talking, kept talking, kept talking. And I'm talking about speaking in tongues. We don't get that much stuff like this no more. Now if the church is still doing, praise God, you keep doing what you do because God is happy with you. God is working with you. God got your people moving them forward. Keep moving higher ground. Next level. Keep going. Keep going. That's what God wants. But those of you that's not doing nothing, you sitting down like uh, Deacon O'Hare used to say, every tub sits on its own bottom. Most of y'all are sitting on your own bottom doing jack dilly nothing. The Bible, Jesus said to us that we, he gave us talents. He gave us talents for us. Now this I'm talking about joy of a friend. The joy of my friend, he keep giving us stuff. But what are we doing with it? We wasting it. We, we overflowing with joy and goodness and, and gladness. And, and some of us have the nerve to still be mean and cantankerous. You think God is happy with that? And you happy with that? You better go back and examine yourself. You better make sure that you live in the life that God has called you to live. You're doing what God has called you to do. Because if you not, woe be unto you. And that is in the scripture. He said, woe be unto you. And I want to make it plain. It's going to be some woe. Because you're going to be like, oh my God. He giving some of y'all some chances to get stuff right. And yet, you, the enemy, has got your mind so cloudy that you are not sure well, I, I'm okay. No. You better go back and do what Revelation said is to do your first works again. Do them over. And if you think you did it right, do it again. Get Make sure you got it down in your spirit. Lord, I need your help. I need you to, to, to untie some things that's in my heart that you will be Please, and in the scripture, he tells us to endure hardness as of a good soldier. Now, a soldier going to go through some things. Now, I know y'all seen the movie Troy, Gladiator. They both are my favorite movies. But when it came to 300, that took the cake. Because when I saw how them soldiers was willing to keep fighting and pressing, because they was not trying to see uh, uh, that king win. They wasn't trying to be no more slaves. They wasn't trying to be no slaves, period. Sparta was a free land. And here we are in America, free land. Now, I know that we got some of the folks talking against our president. The Bible tells us to pray for him. I don't like him, but I'm praying for him. Because one thing I know... Prayer moves God. Not only God, God can move 
whatever hand, whatever the, the heart of the king in his hand can do. He said, "I'll turn it. I'll do what I what I will with him." And and but we he got to hear and see his people come together. We ain't even together. We got some blacks over here. We got some whites over here. We got some Hispanics over here. We got some Hawaiians over here. Asians over there. And and yet, we're supposed to be serving God. But yet, we got some ops against one another. The Bible tells us over in John, how you going to love me when you haven't even seen me? And you can't even stand the folk that you see every day. Y'all better shape up. Before leaving and checking out. Because sin is a sucker's investment in nothing. That's what the devil is selling you. He's not telling it to you. But he's selling it to you. And he's saying, <laughs> you should come on. I got him, Jesus. I got him. And, 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 and the Lord is still yet standing in the midground. Trying to make it known, Father, I'm praying for them. They're going to come through. They're going to. That's what a friend is doing. He's speaking to the Father to try to get you to see the errors of your ways. But you're too hard-hearted. You're not, you're not trying to listen. You're not trying to hear all that. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not good. You need to get in the Word of God and read it. Let it get in your spirit. Let it tear and break up some follow ground. Let it go go through plowing. If you got to keep reciting this word to yourself out loud like I'm talking to you, that's what you need to do. Hear yourself to get it down in your spirit that you'll be able to regurgitate it like a cow does when he's chewing on some, some grass, some fresh green grass. And that grass come out as green as it is or brown as it is, he comes out with it being white milk. That's how God is going to do for us. You got to be well to the point where everything is regurgitating. And, and it's almost working like a washing machine. And it's turning. And it's turning. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. And all it is is that you need to regurgitate it and let it get down deep in your spirit. To the point that when God calls on you. He can say, come on in, my good and faithful servant. Look at you. You, you. you made sure that everything came out real good. You kept going back over and making sure that everything that I spoke to you in that love letter, that you went back and you, you Lord, I, I, I don't think I'm right in this part. So I'm desiring you to make me better. I'm desiring you to take me higher. I'm desiring you to bring me forward. Uh, show me what's, what I'm doing. Reveal it to me if it's in a dream or a vision. I need to know. I, before I leave here, I want to make sure that my, my path is straight for my feet to keep going down. Now, if it's veering off, bring me back on the straight and narrow path. I don't see that with us, some of us. The Bible, you know, we keep saying, well, we ain't got to prove nothing. Uh, I want to be proven. I believe in Malachi. He said, prove me. That's what he said. Prove me. So, well, if he's saying, prove me, which is God. Okay, Lord, prove me. I, I want to see if this thing is real. I want to know, do I have the spirit of you? I want to know. Because I don't want to be faking the fuck. I don't want to be going through this thing like, you know, like I got it all like that. And, 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 and you know, people are looking like, ooh, she's untouchable. She's this. Yeah, I am because I'm a child of the king. And I'll blatantly let that be known. But as for me, mm-mm. No, I, I don't think of myself highly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sitting up in good places with people who got degrees and all of this. And all I got is a diploma. But look at God. God is so good. He gave me, oh, thank you, Jesus. He gave me a mind to, to go forward and to be able to teach 
and do what he orchestrated in my mind to be able to do. Glory to God. And allow me to be able to teach what I'm supposed to teach. God is so good. He, he let me retain that knowledge to go forward in him that they will receive it and then that they learn it and, and go forward and go, wow, I thank you, Lord, for allowing that to go forth out of me from you because you're the greatest teacher. You're the greatest teacher of all teachers. And, and you're the greatest philosopher of all philosophers. You gave me how to say it. You gave me how to do it. You gave me which route to go and which chapter to go to. God is just that good. He's, he's the orchestrator of it all. Anything that you want to know, anything that you want to do, anything that you want to be, he's good at it. He can do it for you. But the devil, he's also good in his state too. He can do what he want to do. And he knows how to take people down. He knows how to drag them down. He knows how to rake them through the mud. He knows how to do all of that. And I think you already know how that go. Because you've been there. You are there. But you have the opportunity to get out. He's giving you the opportunity if you still got air and life in your, your lungs today. He's giving you, he's going to give you peace. He's going to give you joy. He's going to give you a, a whole new life, a new level of life. But you got to want it. You got to want to say, yes, Lord. You got to want to say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Lord, I love you. Lord, I do all that I can for you just to be able to live this life. He said, he, oh, thank you, Jesus. He said to us, holiness without, which no man should see the Lord. Holiness. It's not all about, oh, I'm just saved. I'm okay. I ain't got to live no holy life. My, He wants a clean vessel. It's just like you want clean jeans to put on, clean shirt to put on. Why can't God have a clean vessel? Why he got to go around uh, trying to represent a dirty vessel? He don't want no dirt. He said nothing dirty. Is going to enter into heaven. If he did, he would have allowed the man that came to the wedding to go as he was. He came in there. I'm not. He's seen all the clean clothes. He's seen the bathing water. He's seen the smelling stuff. And, and, and mind you, it was for men and women. He set all that up, but you don't want it. He said, take that man out of here, cast him out. And so, in other words, in a, in a spiritual sense, cast him out into the lake of fire. And that's going to be the sad scenario for every individual that has the opportunity right now on this good earth. Y'all might want to call it, this is hell. No, 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 no. Ain't no weeping and gnashing going on. My friend didn't put me there yet. Because I don't plan on going. And you heard me say yet. But I don't plan on going. That's my mindset. I don't plan on going. Because this right here, this is my way of yet continuing in him. And it's not just to escape hell. No, no, no. It's to live according to the word. I want to be free. I am free. I thank God for being free. I thank God for what he's doing in my life. God is good. There's so many things that I could share and tell you what God has done for me and setting me free. But we don't have that kind of time. But the Bible says, no. I've heard saints say that if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. And I seriously believe that. Seriously believe that. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. I couldn't tell you all of what God has done. Because it would be so much. I could tell you about the little, the little bit of bag of food that the Lord dropped by my house. I mean, there's just so much God is good to us with. And, and, and sometimes we neglect to say, thank you, Lord. All we want to hear is thank you. He said to the to the ten lepers, one only came back. 
but he healed all ten. But only one came back to say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Can you imagine how long that man lived without leprosy? Can you imagine if the others with them having the leprosy, if they had to just came back and said thank you, I believe heaven would have just explodedly gotten happier. Because they've already praising God right now as we speak. When a soul come up here to get saved, when a soul come up here and get filled with the Holy Ghost, heaven explodes. Heaven begins to, you know, begin to just begin to praise God even the more. I believe the cherubims and the seraphims are just wow, look at God. Look at what's going on down here. Because cause see, when we're praising God up here, the heavens is praising him up there. So he got them down below praising and worshiping his name. And then he got them up there that's praising and worshiping his name. That's what God loves. So when praises go up, blessings come down. And that's something that we got to understand. We got to continue to praise him, people. We love him. And I've got to go because my time, I, I, I told you it was exciting. And I have one more scripture and I'm going to go to it and we're going to close it out. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 18 and it's verse 24. And Proverbs chapter 18 Verse 24. And it reads. I think that's right. 24, 24. And it reads. A man that has friends must, must show himself friendly. <coughs> Excuse me. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Again. It says a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And as I remember in my closing. As I remember my pastor back in California, New Sweet Home, East Palo Alto, Pastor A.C. Macklin, we call him Dad, but I thank him for burning that in my spirit. He would say it all the time. He that has friends must first show himself friends. Man, it was so prominent that he would constantly call off and say that scripture. I never realized until I have gotten really seasonally in the word that Pastor Macklin was talking more scripture as regular conversation. He would talk to you and talk to the folk on the street with regular conversation of the scriptures. He would blend it. He, he, it, it was almost like, how you doing? How is everything going? You know that the word, of, it, he would just bring the word forth like it was casual conversation. And the people would just, ex they, some accepted it, some didn't. I can just see that. But he was just good at it, how he would do. And he would be so, the, the church just overflowed with people. I don't see that today. I don't see that today. I see the times of the way things have changed. And I, and I pray that all of the ones that came up under him, like me and all the other saints, that, man, we keep a bit of that. That's why he can't, his spirit just keeps flowing and flowing. And then on top of that, our children get to hear about all the good things that he did. Him and Mother Macklin. Because I don't forget about her either. Beautiful. And they produce great saints. Now if you didn't get it and you came out from under him and you still acting like the devil and doing all kind of craziness, you didn't, you really didn't hear the word. I believe that it, it was just beautiful in the eyes of God how, how things were there. And it was a growing ground. In the message Bible it says, friends come and friends go. But a true friend sticks by you like family. That's how I love, that's why I love my old church home. That's why I always talk about it. I love it so. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love it so because when I was introduced, the Lord allowed Pastor Macklin to tell us, you got some aunties over here. You got some cousins over here. You got some grandmamas, some grandpapas, some uncles, some aunties. All that we consider family in the natural. He said this is it in the spiritual. I remember, and I'm going to close with this. My mom got so mad that she said you'll do anything for the church folk before you do it for your family. She just didn't understand that when you come over here where the table is spread, God has it all for you. And that's what God wants us to understand. And he wants us to know that he is everything. He is all in all. He is everything to us. He's our mother, our father. He gives people to us that loves us like he loves us. And sometimes we want to be hugged. We want to be talked to. But God, he works through an individual within the church. And they begin to share and give you the knowledge. And as you're thinking that it's that person, it's God. It's Jesus Christ. So if you don't have him in your life today, get him. Get him. I don't care if you on the phone watching me. Walk into the store. Receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. He's going to do you good. He's going to do you good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He is going to do you good. You're going to be so glad. Why didn't I do this sooner? That's what I said. Why didn't I do this sooner? Could have saved me from a whole bunch of stuff. But I didn't know. I wanted to have my fun. I wanted to do what people were talking about. God is so good, y'all. Y'all better get him. Make sure you know who Jesus is before you clock out of here. You don't know when you're going to clock out. But he does. He knows. You got to receive him. You should want to receive him. I pray that you... That, the, that everybody gets an opportunity to receive him as a Lord and personal Savior. Now, again, if you are watching on Facebook and you don't know or don't have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I submit, I ask you to begin to thank him, but yet, Lord, recognize that you are a sinner. Accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. Begin. Begin a whole new life. If you, if you got to do it every day, keep praying and asking God to, to, to make you understand what salvation is all about. God is good. He's worthy. You're worthy. Don't take nothing less than that. Know that God is for you. It's the devil that wants to take you out. He's the joy of a friend. That's what the joy of a friend will do. He will bring you in to a nice dinner. A nice brunch. He's going to give you everything that you could ever ask for. And some. He's saying prove him. I dare you. You're going to get what you didn't think that you were going to get, but you, you'll get. And then you'll be like saying, just like I said, why did I do this sooner? God is good. God is good. So I have to go.